Hello everyone, I'm Silent Death, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, episode 11. Today, we are going to work on making some money. First off, I've moved our little flag that we're using as a marker to get back to the runway. Just off the runway because it was over here to the side and that was making me return to the space plane hangar without using the revert button. I've also added a few mods some of which you suggested and some of which I came across as I was looking around the mod thing. Talk about those after we take off. First let's spool up our engines. How are we doing? 1.2 And we're starting to move, so we'll tap off the brakes Today's mission is a series of satellites that need to be put into orbit or into various orbits And this should just pretty much leap off the runway if it gets going fast enough there it goes, it's starting to try to take off. We'll just pull straight up. That I think is going to do it. Now, as you suggested, I've added in the STX air brakes so that I can slow down on the runway somewhat disappointing there because I've been practicing my landing with near a bit doing the test uh, part at X atmosphere going at certain speeds so I just basically point the thing straight up fly straight up and then do the test, then dive straight down. And then while skimming three inches above the runway at about Mach, Mach 47, I deploy the parachute and hope that the thing doesn't disintegrate when it touches the runway. Got fairly good at that. Learned a number of things, including the fact that you can, in, can indeed destroy the runway if you hit it hard enough very interesting thing but yeah the runway is destructible climbing on up there some other mods that I've added is this mod which I think is flight indicators we've added a tweak scale which I'm not using on this thing um, the active tactic management and a few other things like that just to run in the background to improve things a little bit we may need to start leveling off here. We should actually be leveling off here. Let's just... Nope, not right there. Slow our ascent a little bit. We're starting to get at our peak thrust to weight ratio, which is at a thousand meters per second with these types of engines. Or so I've read. What other mods do I add? I can't remember everything. I did see one mod that B9, the guy who does B9 Airspace, I don't know his full name because, well, I saw it, but I can't remember it. But it is procedural wings. He has a little animation of all the different shapes that you can make wings. And also procedural control surfaces. Very, very, very useful and very sexy looking mod that I really want right as soon as possible it's currently still being developed so I have not installed it on this game just yet but I will be doing that at some point in the future assuming that it gets finished while this series is still running okay we're starting to pass our peak performance vertical speed is going down we don't want it to go down quite so much we do need to kind of tilt over a little bit 
get right on that 90 degree mark. Since one of the missions we have is to get something in perfect orbit, we have three missions for this. Slide this down. Are we still accelerating? We should be. Yeah, we're still pulling up there. Alright, our missions, or contracts, I should say. I call them missions, but they're contracts. So, we don't have that one. We don't have that one. So, satellite in equatorial orbit of carbon. Wow, I just butchered that word, didn't I? Then, one in equator orbit of Minmus. And... Let's see. On the moon, and another one in synchronous, synchron. Okay, that word, orbit of Minmus. Synchronous. That's not right. I know that's not right. It doesn't sound right. All right, we're starting to slow down a little bit. We can speed up. I know that we can go faster with these engines, so I'm going to accelerate or fast forward a little bit. You're going to be seeing a lot of this guy our variations on this guy in the next two or three episodes as we try to get a reputation up try to make more money simply because it is extremely cheap and efficient to use a SSTO and I've designed this to be a multifunction plane or more or less multifunction with a few tweaks like adding cargo bays or not adding cargo bays and sticking the little thing on like we did last time but I will be back shortly We are back. We have got a somewhat circular orbit. Not quite perfect, but eh, it doesn't matter too much. So first thing, we need to get our cargo out. We're using the three identical satellites. So we will just... Let's go down some. don't have any RCS on them which might be a mistake but we'll find out at least I don't think I put any RCS on them it's been a couple of days since I built them our day and it was late so there they go off to the wild blue yonder we're going to close this and while we're up here, we have a mission to get some science from around the Kerbin. So let's go ahead and do that. Just transmit. Oh, one of the things I got was the community science thing. Because, you know, after you've played this for a little while, the whatchamacallits, you memorize all the science things that are in the stock game. And that's just, you know, it takes away a little bit when you just click through those. So having the community things is generally better. So let's switch back to this and deploy all of the vast quantity of solar power things, solar panels. Now, since we're having to go to Minmus, what we're going to do is manually trigger this stage manually yeah there we go so that one will be the one that goes to Kerbin and these will be the one that go to Minmus and who are we controlling okay we're controlling this guy we could just go ahead and activate this engine manually they do have power should have plenty of power plenty of torque so we can just target Minmus that's pretty cool I was wondering how I was going to figure out what orbit these things need to be in. But that, that is extremely helpful. Fortunately, it doesn't look like you can target it. But, you know, it has the numbers and I can use those. But Minmus first. We'll send it on its way to Minmus and then maybe switch back to the other one. Set as target. 
See where is your inclination and stuff. So your sending node at that. We will change this. So that's the sending node. We need to go negative. Maybe we'll do it at Batians. Oh, there it is. Nope, that's something else. Sending node. That's pretty big. A sending node. Point nine. One point four. There it goes. One point three. Zero. Perfect. Perfection in all of its forms. So estimated burn time. It does not know. So let's update the burn time. A couple of minutes, and we're five minutes away from our node. And unfortunately, this thing does not have the node locking. What you do it? To don't have it. Bye, guy. So we'll just speed speed up. Um, I guess I'll do this manually instead of setting up an alarm clock. I mean, it's only a couple of minutes. At least we're in a large enough orbit that this shouldn't be a bad thing. Now let's switch to fine control so that I can adjust this better. There we go. Yeah, plenty of Delta V. Still 5,000 Delta V. I'm not sure if it's counting this stuff up here or the fuel in this one. I don't even know if they share or what, though it shouldn't really matter. I mean, we have enough Delta V. 2,000, 5,000 doesn't really make a whole bunch of difference. We're only going like a thousand or so. Though we do have to change one of our orbits, I think. So there's the all the pieces that we're leaving in orbit, all the junk, horrible, horrible things of me. But I guess I will be back. Well, not going to take that long. Yeah, I'll just be back. You don't want to watch it, even if it is on 10 seconds. Our couple of probes are on their way to Minmus in uh, however long. I think I set up something. At least I thought I did. There it is. Um, in 18 days. Okay, going to be a little while for them then. Now then, we want to uh, try to get this done. So there's that path. What else? Let's see. Can I get the uh, nodes changed? Maybe I should wait until after I've adjusted a couple of things. So let's just burn prograde here. I think we're still in daylight, right? A little bit. Uh, SAS is on. We have it set to go prograde, and it is not moving. Um, alright. Maybe I have it controlled from the wrong thing? Control from here. Go prograde. Okay, don't move at all then. That's fine. If that's what you want to do. Do that. Then we'll just get our orbit up. To how high? 13.8 million meters. That's going to be hard if this doesn't lock on. I don't know why it's not working. It's because there was more than one probe in the spacecraft? Well, the other one wasn't working right either, so I really don't know what's going on there. They have power. It says they have power. It just does not know what's going on. That's very disappointing. Maybe if I reload or something, I don't know. Okay, so we'll speed this up. Well, really, if it's not going to stay still, 
Look, lock on the thing. Stay right there. I guess it's because we're orbiting and we're going to run out of power if we keep burning like this. I guess I probably should have put a node in to figure out how much I need to burn. But we'll elongate this one as much as we can with the power we have. Time to accelerate a little bit. We do have a lot of battery, so don't do that. Am I on fine controls? No. We are. So, 1.7. It's getting there. It's not doing it very well. Maybe the probes are broken, or maybe it's one of the other mods that's conflicting with them. I don't know. It could be. Let me know if you also have problems with probes. That'll be something that can help me out. Or if you know what's causing this, that would also be something that could help me out. We might actually reach it. We're going to be close. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, don't, don't interact with the moon. I would really rather you not do that. It's barely boosting at the moment. And our nodes, yeah, I figured those were going to be really bad. Corpses. Uh, 13.6. So we need 13.8. 13.83. Well, that should be enough. We can... Retrograde a little bit. I do not know. Oh, we can't retrograde, that's right. I don't know what the uh, precision required for these missions are. It said trivial, so I'm thinking maybe not very much. 8382. What's the other one actually? That's not very much. little bit of a moon encounter there. Hopefully that doesn't... Hmm, okay, I'm going to burn uh, just so that I don't get that moon encounter. We're pretty close. Hopefully this will be close enough. There we go. And at our apoapsis... We're going to add another maneuver node to circularize our orbit. So we don't have like make jab or anything to do that for us. Okay, not quite that much then. Though at least we do have this precision nodes thing. So 13.2, probably go down to the single digit now. And I'm betting that if we adjust the time, things will get a little bit better. There's the periapsis where we want it. 13 point that. 13 point seven. Slow that down. That looks pretty close. Wow, that's a long burn though, so we're not going to get very exact. Note in a whole day. Alright, we will set an alarm for this. We're going to have a lot of alarms for this mission. I think one minute will do... Let's give it two minutes. Gives enough time to switch vessels and stuff. Right. So you're on your way. Then we can get that one done. You're getting your electrical charge drained. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter since you're not doing anything right now. You have fun with that. 
Now then we'll switch back to uh, our thing over here. Okay, we are here and hopefully retrograde works here. It seems too good. So we're going to try to uh, land this thing using the air brakes. And if we can get this to line up here, we'll see. Yeah, that's wrong. I thought I heard those engines try to fire. They do use fuel even if they don't have air, so I was just wasting fuel there. So if we wait until this starts to drop in the atmosphere, we will see something. Another mod that I have installed which is called trajectories so where it's red is where we're hitting the atmosphere and it's kind of estimating where we're going to land crash whatever based on a near or far model of the aerodynamics I'm not sure what assumptions get made, but obviously some of them. You can see this is where the game thinks we're going to land. And this has us bouncing off the atmosphere and then going around. Probably doing that. Then it models it all the way to us bouncing off the atmosphere here again. So I'm not really sure what assumptions are made. I'm thinking that it's thinking that you're pointing prograde the whole time. And that's why we get the bounce off, because if we were pointing along this vector the whole time, we would obviously go into a recovery type thing. But we will let us bounce off the atmosphere. That'll slow us down a little bit, and then we'll dip down in there. But I'm going to fast forward that part while we wait for our various probes to do that thing. And... And we'll probably, possibly, yeah, probably we're going to launch another mission while we wait on those probes. So, I will see you in a moment, back on the runway. The craft that launched the uh, Duna lander has been refurbished, refueled, and we decided to stick something much heavier on top of it and see if we could get into orbit with that. This will be a fairly significant test of this craft given the weight of this is I think 11 tons. Well, let's try it. And we will cue the fast forward. All right, we've got our orbit. So let's hope that I got this thing staged properly and pop it off. And there it goes. Switch to it. Let's see if we want it to be facing retrograde, I think. Then let's go ahead and extend these solar panels, which I should have put in an action group, but oh well. Too late now. I guess you can probably edit the save file to add them to action groups later. 
Which perhaps I will do that. I did some science around Kerbin to get enough science to unlock these big giant solar panels. Because they were really, really needed for the ion drive we are using. A 1.25 meter ion drive. Just want to make sure that things are right. Let's see. It is being controlled from here. And there goes that. Bye. Don't need that extra weight anymore. Or that weight. So we'll just go back. I'll just leave it like this, actually. Now we can put a perk grade. Right? It doesn't really matter. So what I did was I built a probe capable of getting to Moho and back with a whole bunch of little sciencey things. These are the 6.25 meter um, material science things. Unfortunately, you can't scale goop canisters, so I only got two of those because they're so heavy. Uh, a whole bunch of like seismic sensors and bar barometers and thermometers and all kinds of ometers. So I designed that and then realized that it would take, you know, 10 minutes and then another 20 minute burn to get into orbit of Moho. So I said screw that and just added this big giant nuclear engine with some fuel for that just to make things easier on myself because I am a little bit lazy. So that'll be uh, 12 days until we need to come back to this thing. Um, I guess we will go ahead and land that. We do have five hours left until the next maneuver node. And as we reach our little maneuver node, we see the moon here trying to troll us and get in our way. But we are not going to be fooled. We have to burn for a fair amount of time. Speed things up that way. A little bit of physics acceleration for some fun and profit. More about the profit right now. Stupid. Have to do that. Oops. Let's see. Where are we? Um. Node. Node. Get away from the moon, please. The moon's still trying to troll us. Very little Delta V left. Or left to burn. 13.7. That's what we're shooting for. I think, okay, 788, is that what we're supposed to be? Um, did we just, oh, we just finished the mission. Well, that was easy. I thought I had another burn there. Okay, I guess that was close enough then. I'm going to leave this satellite here. It doesn't have parachutes or anything anyway, and I think we might be able to do some of the science things that they ask us to do around carbon with that. So what do we get from that? 90k and 12 science. Not a whole lot of science, but 90k, that's 
decent amount of profit. So next we're going to have the uh, curve, no. Oh, the next is our launch window. So that comes up before anything else happens. So I will be back. Um, I guess I'm going to adjust this. Give me five minutes to fiddle around with maneuver nodes. Thank you. Did that actually change it? I am not. Okay, it did. Right, so I will be back shortly. Alright, it is time. We are in our launch window. We need to do some launches. So, being that this is an inner planet, we're going to want to burn on the. starting from the dark side and transitioning to the light side. Make sure we get everything all nice and aligned. Who are you? Oh, that's the Duna. Hey, Duna. Numo, New, I believe his name was. I already forgot him. Really, why did my node just randomly change? I didn't click anything. I'm just zooming out, did that? Okay. Numo. What a weird name. Let's get this nice and properly lined up. Moho is, of course, the planet that takes the most Delta V to get to, mostly due to the plane change. It is also the planet that's launch window comes up the most frequently due to its short year, I guess you could call that. Which makes it a very good choice to send bunches of unmanned probes to, to get all that science. And send it back, assuming you're willing to pay the premium to get that science back to you. Or you could just, I guess, transmit it if you're going to be cheap. Or maybe you can build something with some ion probes that can land and get off of the planet. Though it is kind of hard to build anything with ion probes that can lift off from Moho. If you have the material science and the goo canister, and those tend to give kind of the most amount of science. And also, of course, you can't do EVA samples or crew reports, but it's something. And we're here switching back to our satellites. As they circularize our orbit, sort of. Don't want to circularize it too much because we just have to burn right back out. So we separate them and start fiddling with some maneuver nodes to get things just lined up so we can start finishing these missions and making some mana. And with zillions and zillions and zillions of alarms and jumping back and forth between all of our various craft. See, we're back to the Moho probe. Have to tweak that node to get kind of an approximation of how far we need to burn. Since we're going to be burning two different types of engines, we're going to have to sort of manually calculate how long the actual burn time needs to be. So maybe this fiddling is really not that necessary. But it's good to have, you know, kind of an idea of how much you need to burn and then fiddle with it or tweak it as you're burning rather than kind of having to change things at the last step. So that one's set up and then we will set up an alarm for that. And back to our last Minmus satellites. More and more tweaking. Mission Control is just really, really earning their pay this episode. But more, more, just adjusting the angles, the apoapsises, the periapsises, and all that little annoying things. 
to get these in their desired orbits. It's really, really helpful. Though I wish you could target the orbit so they could see your proper inclination and in things. And we will switch back to old me for the very last satellite burn. After we complete this one, which I believe we just did. Okay, so we have... Oh, it's already going. Burn, burn, burn. Oh, almost went a little bit over that. Pop back out. I wish you would remember that setting at least. Okay, is that close enough? It is, in fact, close enough. No, maybe. I think we didn't get both the get didn't get to read both pop-ups. So position in equator orbit. Yeah, it's gone, so apparently that one is done too. So what did that give us? 122,000 buckaroos, 62 science, and 90 reputation. I wonder if we switch back to this vessel where it'll tell us the other thing. Alright, so this is the one that we didn't get to see. 198,000, that's a lot. 94 science and 107 reputation. That was really worth it. We also have some new missions, Explore Eve. I don't know why that one just popped up, but I'll take it. Um, 300,000, actually, I wonder if the price will go up if we get more reputation. That's an interesting question. It doesn't look like it. I mean, they're all whole numbers, and all the other ones are kind of... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, no, they're not. But yeah, what if we get our reputation even higher? Then will it let us go to EVE? Um, we'll have to look and see what our launch window mm -hmm. is there. Mm -hmm. Temperatures, cans, and minimus. That one wouldn't be bad. 202 reputation. I think we'll pick that one up. Mm -hmm. Temperature scans of carbon. Not really worth it. Result surveys of carbon. I guess if I did both those at the same time off camera, they might pay for, mm -hmm. I don't know, lunch or something. We do have a whole bunch that we're currently doing. But when is the launch window for Eve? Oh, we still have a long time for that. So yeah, we'll keep that one on the books and see if it goes up. Next time, we'll probably be working on making more money. I'm thinking we'll do another set of stations. We have, I think, three station things right now. The, the one to the moon is still probably on the edge of our limits. As it has to have nine Kerbals and a research lab. If I'm going to launch something that big... I would like to have, you know, more things with it. But that is it for this episode. A like if you like. Oh, wait, we can we have enough science. Did I not? I guess we got some for that thing. So we can get our last little thing here. Research that. Oh, it does unlock something. I did not think that unlocked anything. Well, none of it's particularly important for us. I rarely use these. But maybe that unlocks something else over here. Anyway, like if you like, subscribe if you're not. Leave a comment if you have anything to say. I do read all the comments. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.